Asatoma Sat Gamaya Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya Mrityorma Mritan Gamaya oh. Namaste everyone. Today we are going to talk about different areas or types of Jyotish that exist. Usually when we speak about Jyotish in the West, we talk mainly about making charts and talking about the uh, destiny of people. Because in the West we have also a kind of divination process that is called astrology. And uh, usually uh, people understand Jyotish as a type of astrology, like a Hindu type or Vedic type of astrology. This can also be true, but this can also be not true. <laughs> so today we are going to speak about uh, several angas, several um, limbs, several branches of Jyotish and also probably how they developed uh, during uh, the past of time. Okay, so now we are going to start, start to talk about this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, the last video, Karmic Currents, was the first of this series in Portuguese that I'm also recording in English. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have uh, not watched yet, please go to the previous one in the playlist that is in the description below. Okay? Namaste. I'm Thiago. Namaste. And I'm glad to see you again. Let's go. Okay, let's start with number one. So, um, in our current uh, school program, we don't understand history in this way, but okay. In the uh, Indian or Vedic fashion, uh, history is quite different from what we learned about the pyramids of Egypt and this kind of stuff, okay? So this Vedic per period, it's a period where there was a civilization uh, in the Sarasvati river that it today is not uh, more flowing. Here we have Bharat, that is the name that is used for what we call today India, even though that there was another kind of lands and it was a little bit bigger than what we call India today. But okay, we can say that Bharat is something that resembles India today. And this Vedic period, um, there is no precise timing of this because there is no um, written history um, in this period mainly because it was recorded in a, a written manner after and also there is not so much constructions even though there is two civilizations that are uh, acknowledged nowadays in this uh, in this region um, but this Vedic period the, pro the important thing for now is that the rishis that con that um, saw that uh, received the Rig Veda, the Yajur Veda, the Sama Veda, the Artava Veda. Uh, they were living in natural landscapes. They were relating to the sun, they were relating to the moon, they were relating to the wind, they were relating to the uh, thunderstorms, they were relating to the um, natural environment. Okay? And uh, uh, as researchers of connection between the microcosm with the uh, macrocosm, they were researching ways to connect with subtle forms of energy, things that we probably say that it's just like mysticism today. We don't acknowledge them scientifically uh, yet. Um, they were uh, researching and developing a system on how to make proper actions on proper timings and the auspicious timings. This auspiciousness, auspicious, are related to um, humanity. 
the timings here is the timing to make rituals, to make uh, yagyas. They are um, badly translating, translated as sacrifices, but they are um, tools, they are technology, they are spiritual technologies to uh, enhance certain kind of vibrations in the planet or in the atmosphere or whatever. So the point is that this Muhurta uh, Limb Anga of Jyotish was developed very early in the history and here there was a little bit of deities. There was still not so much nakshatras, but the deities were there because they were relating with the deities, not so much what later is going to be uh, mainly about the nakshatras and the rashis and whatever. So this time, uh, the science of uh, omens, Nimitta, was very used as long as uh, the timing schedule, the Pachanga, how, Pachanga, how to measure time, okay? There, if all the um, mathematical uh, considerations were favorable, but you have a strong sign of the natural environment around you, saying, don't do this now, the rishis would say, okay, prana, uh, divine consciousness is not willing to accept our offerings now. So this is like the shamanic period where the yogis, where the saints, were fully absorbed in the environment and they were uh, propitiating, they were uh, acknowledging, they were uh, making namaha, reverence to uh, divine consciousness. Later on, when this civilization crashed because the river dried or any karmic uh, uh, explanations that we can uh, think and talk, there was another civilization that it was the Gangetic civilization along the Ganga, Ganga River, okay? This is a kind of civilization that brought a lot of cultural um, knowledge from this number one area, but also took influence from another part of Bharat, India, and developed a different kind of system, a Brahmanical system, where the deities were uh, in a human form, uh, like Brahma, Vishnu, Sadashiva. Uh, they will lose the, their uh, natural um, attributes like Surya, Chandra, Vayu, Indra, even though Indra is already more uh, in a more humanized, it's changing the time. But the point is that during this period, the Hindu uh, related to Ganges, Ganga River, um, there was more development of this kind of Jyotish that we call Jataka. That is related to an uh, individual karma. And mainly the karma from previous lives. Uh, the karma that you bring to this planet in the moment that you're, you take birth, uh, it can be in the moment that you just like show your head or the moment that you put out your body or the moment that the umbilical cord is cut, depends on how and uh, to whom you ask. But the point is that this uh, thing here is much more close to what we call in the West astrology in a sense that is related to self-knowledge, to understand your psychology, to understand your patterns, your behavior, and also to make predictions about the future. But this tool here is very powerful to understand yourself, to uh, understand the karmic patterns that uh, tries to move you and if you identify if it, it moves you, okay? Usually here in the West, we have this school, the Parashari school of uh, Jataka and uh, the Jaimini school of Jataka. They are the most famous and they are the most uh, complete. 
just like in Ayurveda, there were a lot of information about Ayurveda that it was lost, and we only have some pieces of the Charak Samhita and Samhita, the Bela Samhita was lost. All this information was not completely uh, delivered to the present moment. There is like cut, uh, cut and cut uh, and uh, paste. <clears throat> there was no much copy in this sense, <laughs> but it, it was just like different, uh, maybe different sages and different timings, and it was constructing uh, uh, during time a lot of uh, technology information, understanding about how to read the individual karma and to make predictions and also to assess the king. Um, how to deal with the kingdom. So this was just like the intelligence, CIA, of old kingdoms on what to, how to make and uh, uh, progenity to how to understand the things that are going to be done with the kingdom. We also have a different branch of Jyotish that is called, it's called Prashna, and probably this Prashna came more from the south. Uh, we call this the Hinduism of the south. There is mainly Shaivit. Uh, here in the north is mainly Vaishnavit. It's just like in a broad sense. Uh, the uh, Vishnu, the Shiva, the Tantric uh, tools are much more yoga developed in the south. In the north, the Brahmins were just like sitting and making pujas and yagyas. They were not practicing yoga, even though here, in, somewhere in the middle, there is a lot of understanding about the breath, the prana, the nadis. This is a lot of things that were developing in different areas of we call what we call India today, and they were mingling, and they were having different types of expression. But in the south of India is the place where prashna is more um, rooted, and it's more safe to uh, study this kind of thing. Not that in the north you cannot find this, but the point is that this is more um, maybe authentic in the south today still, because there was not so much influence from uh, Mongols and uh, Arabian culture. So the Prashna is related to present questions. Present questions. Will I get married? Will I have a good job? Will, uh, will my son um, travel? Will I uh, have a good uh, retirement? Will I question? It's a thing that is closely answered by Prashna. Prashna, the chart, is not about uh, yourself. It's about the moment where the question is put. So Prashna, it's a good way to uh, ask the oracle. Please, oracle, give me an answer. Is this good or is this bad? The, just like in Delphus in, in Greece. Uh, here in Prussia, we have more this kind of astrology. What should I do? This or that? And you ask the Jyotisha, the astrologer, and he says, oh, this is going to be easier or difficult. This, that is going to be uh, difficult or easy. Okay? Uh, all these uh, kinds of... Um, areas, use math mathematics and uses astronomy, but they use it in a different manner. Here in the Vedic period, we have the deities of the nakshatras. Here in the Prashna, we have the nakshatras and the rashis. Here in the um, current uh, Parashari uh, uh, Jyotisha, he only says in Brihat Parashara, you should know about nakshatras, but there is not much information about nakshatras there. So Parashari uh, Jyotisha is not uh, very developed in a sense of uh, using nakshatras in a more analytical manner as it, it does with Rashis. 
that, the, not that this does not exist in Parashara or Jamini, but the point is where is the focus, where is the emphasis, okay? So we have different types of approaches in Jyotish on how to handle these different situations, right? And these are all important tools. Even today, when there is elections, people do muhurta, or when it's going to make uh, marriage, or when it's going to make any big decision, uh, people don't do prashna. Uh, prashna is to get married or not, but the point in the time is muhurta. And uh, if the person is going to be easily get married or not, is Jataka. So, uh, Jyotish uh, practitioners uh, study a lot of different uh, areas of uh, understanding karma and uh, observing prana to answer different kinds of questions. Okay? But today, mostly in the West, what we call Jyotish is related to this area of Jataka. That is related to the individual at the moment of birth even though it's not so clear if the birth time is the point where it's just like out of the womb or beginning to go out of the womb, as I said, but this is another point, okay? This we're going to talk about in the next video. When, it's, when is it your birthday, okay? According to George. So I hope you like this video. If you like, please share it. And uh, see you in the next video. Namaste.